And please welcome Dr. Marjorie Dixon in the house. Yeah, I know, she's got Zane here, just one month old, and his parents, Natasha and Omar. So this is an incredible story. Marjorie, you are on the map, the world map right now, because you actually used an IVF treatment. This is the first human being born by using this new IVF treatment. And we want to learn everything about it. He's a miracle. Zane is absolutely is. a miracle. Let's talk first about what this breakthrough treatment is. What's it called? So How does it work? It's called Augment, and it is using mitochondria. So mitochondria are like the packed energy cells, the batteries of cells, and they provide additional energy. So when patients have eggs that are diminishing in their quality, um, there are not a lot of options that we have for these patients. And we know that if we can improve the intracellular environment, it's biology, if we can make the quality of the egg better, then we have the potential to create additional energy and then better quality embryos and then babies. So where do you get the good mitochondria from? That's the exciting part. So it's been done previously using what's called heterologous or somebody else, allogeneic mitochondria. So remember those in the papers, the three-person per, three babies, yes. getting somebody else's young eggs and extracting the cytoplasm with its mitochondria from it. This is different. Okay. This is where, so we do a surgical procedure first. He's so zen, he loves the camera, it's awesome. It's where awesome. you do a surgical procedure first and you remove a portion of the ovarian cortex and you can actually grow precursor cells, mm -hmm. which are ovarian precursor cells, which are ovary stem cells, essentially, that grow, and from those, you can extract the mitochondria, and then when we do in vitro fertilization subsequently, so you do the procedure first to get the tissue mm -hmm. that you can grow the precursor cells in, and then afterwards, when you do the IVF, you take the mitochondria from the cells that you've grown, and you inject it into, inside of the egg. So did you take, you got those precursor cells so we did a from surgery Natasha's first. Ovaries. From her own over, so she provided her own cell therapy huh. for Zane. But if she has eggs that don't, that aren't healthy enough to uh, to create an, uh, an embryo, a healthy embryo, where did you get the good mitochondria from her? From the outer portion of her own ovary. So this comes to so much as the clinician gets the 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 overture. Yeah. It comes from basic science. So there are scientists that are toiling away, basic scientists behind the scenes. Yeah. So when you're a reproductive endocrinologist, yeah, when you work with patients and you do all of the clinical stuff, you have to be uh, very well connected and understanding what the basic science is available behind you and mm -hmm. what can be new to be available to your patients. When the first IVF baby in 1978, Louise Brown came out, people thought, in vitro fertilization, that's crazy. Now 1.5 million babies are born through IVF every year. Right. right. So now the cytoplasmic transfer of mitochondria we know has been a potential, but we haven't actually seen the uh, possibility until they were able to grow the precursor cells, and that's what augment is. So you are augmenting your own embryo quality and egg quality. Okay, it's, it's, it's called augment. Yeah. I want to talk to the parents for a second. Natasha, what, and Omar, what have you been through before you got this breakthrough fertility treatment? What had you done? Um, well, we did a lot. We did Clomid, we did um, IUI. Uh, That's inseminations. Okay, so. yep. Um, we also did one IVF uh, treatment prior to Zane that mm -hmm. failed. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was, there was a lot in probably over a year that we'd been seeing Dr. Dixon. Mm -hmm. It is a very emotional journey for parents going through this. And I want to know, Omar, from your perspective, how did you keep going? What was going through your mind this entire time? Well, I think it was a really, really long journey, but I think most importantly, Natasha and I, we remain positive and very hopeful that eventually we would have a child one day. And, um, you know, my hat's off. And I'm very fortunate to have Natasha as my wife because she went through a lot. Um, and she always remained positive throughout our journey. And, you know, there was a light at the end of the tunnel, and for us, that was Zane. What, how do you feel right now, Natasha, when you look into those little eyes? I, sometimes I still can't believe it. <laughs> um, sometimes yeah. I refer to him as, uh, or I refer to myself as auntie because of my niece, because <laughs> I can't <laughs> believe I'm a mom, but uh, yeah. it's an incredible feeling. And I have to say that for them, they were patients that you have to find patients who have an IVS cycle previously did, didn't go so well okay. and they were the ideal candidates for it but then they were also very amenable like I called them back into my office I said look 
there's this new therapy that's available and we're fortunate to be able to offer it to you. And mm -hmm. all of these centers from around the world started together. We just, Zane was the first. Amazing. You've been in Time Magazine for this. It's, a, it's incredible yeah. that you were the doctor to do this, uh, Dr. Marjorie Dixon. You know Dixon. what's it's good incredible. is that Canadians have now another option for hope, especially when your egg quality is not so good. And patients from around the world were being contacted. So we will work with other clinicians. We can't do everything at once, we yes. will, but we want to be able to get it to other people because this is something previously that the only other option was egg donation. Right. And it, it's groundbreaking. This is going to be able to provide another option for people who have lost hope. So. Now before your, your phone starts ringing off the hook for Step Fertility, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about cost because it's not exactly the same as a regular IVF treatment. Are we talking about double the price? Yes. Yeah, so it's on top of the cost of IVF. However, whenever there's new technology and science and the research, it has to be able to um, recuperate those initial investing costs. Yes. Over time, like anything that we've done with assisted reproduction, ICSI used to be cost prohibitive. ICSI is where we stick the sperm into the egg. Mm -hmm. Now we do it routinely for male factor and also for IVF um, with frozen cycles. So at the end of the day, we know that once more people have access to it, it will become so much more accessible. And that's what we want. Any risks? Um, when you're doing ICSI, I guess at the time of the injection, you have to be in the hands of a skilled manipulator. So it's not every clinic that will be able to do it either. Mm -hmm. The future of, of assisted reproduction will be in the science. Yeah. And the point is to have healthy, happy babies, which... For sure. We're, we, we're going to be celebrating every birthday with them. Yeah. You know? We're currently, stuck. <laughs> currently not available in the U.S., only in Canada. In Can well, there are different centers. There's in the U.K. and Dubai and whatnot, but in North America, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations. Thank you. It is absolutely incredible. He's he so is totally zen. zen. He belongs on a television set. <laughs> Just bring him back any time. All right, let's go to break. We've got more coming up. Stay with us. That is just amazing.